Backstreet Boys are one of the most successful male vocal groups in music history. They have set records, broken millions of teenage hearts, and silenced critics who charge that they were nothing more than a prefab boy band. And we're considered a, a, a vocal group. That's what we want to be called vocal because that's what we are. We're singers. Jam on the bench, just got it. Come on now, everybody. We've got it going one more year. While 1998 was the popular quintet's most successful year, it was also their most challenging. You realize that this is called the music business. Don't forget that while you're on stage doing your music, your business could be walking out the door behind you. And it's very true. It was probably our most successful year, but probably one of the most difficult years of our lives. Although the group sold over 27 million copies of their album, Backstreet Boys, the boys found they had little more money in the bank than when they started. They wondered whether Lou Pearlman, the band's founder and manager, had been distributing the profits evenly. You're not being true to me. To make matters worse, the boys discovered that Pearlman had secretly been managing the group's fiercest competition, the up-and-coming NSYNC. Overnight, Pearlman went from father figure to deadbeat dad, and the young singers felt the deep sting of betrayal. <clears throat> Constant people that are around us in the beginning stage, we always thought that those people that were around us right from the beginning were always going to be there and there were people we could trust and count on. I think we've kind of realized that the five of us we have to trust within each other first. Brian called in a team of lawyers to seek emancipation from Perlman and his associates. The boys were now square in the middle of a sticky court battle, all the while trying to maintain their heavy tour schedule. We've all grown up a lot in the last year and we've all matured and became businessmen. We've been kind of forced to. Things went from bad to worse when a doctor broke the news to Brian that he had to undergo open heart surgery immediately or he would be in a serious health crisis. Brian had a heart defect since he was a child and he had twice rescheduled the operation in order to keep up with the band's breakneck pace. We're, we're just at the point where we're trying to juggle our careers and our life, so. Yeah. Because we're human beings and but our career is on a fast pace and we just try to keep up. Eight weeks to the day after Brian's surgery, he was performing with the group again. Everything went great. Uh, I want to thank the fans especially for all their support. I love you guys and I'm happy to be back out on the stage. Not fully recovered, he relied on oxygen tanks backstage for the first few weeks. It's really hard to, to put into words right now just because this is like the first day back to work for me. But um, it's good. It's good. I feel a lot older like i've been through a lot the group's string of misfortune continued when shortly after brian's return howie suffered the devastating loss of his sister to lupus a neurological disease but i think it's made us stronger as a group i think you know we're i think we're not the closest we've ever been five of us you know and you know we definitely have each other's backs the stress was tremendous and the young stars wisely decided to take a short break we all kind of woke up realize you know what none of this is worth anything if we're not happy and we're not healthy and we were reaching a point where we were really burned out and we weren't enjoying it anymore when the dust finally settled backstreet boys had found new representation at the firm and they were ready to head back to the studio yeah. a brand new album brand new management brand new positive attitude everything's been really going great i mean we've all just been having this real big positive aura around us and we're all psyched for the new tour, the new album, the new everything. For their sophomore effort, Kevin and Brian lent a hand with songwriting and producing duties. We co-produced a lot of the tracks, a lot of background vocals and, and stuff like that. So Kevin was saying before, we learned a lot. We all collaborate together and that's what makes it the Backstreet Boys sound. We love hip hop. I mean, we love all kinds of music. and. In our up tempos, it's going to be a lot of fun to do choreography and do that live. Millennium, released in 1999, set records when it sold over one million copies in the first week and made its debut at number one. If they keep piling up, that's great. Um, 
we're not, we don't really have a number in our heads. Uh, we're just excited that, that people are, that 18 million people have bought our music, and we hope they like it. So we're just going to keep making it. The album would be their biggest, with back-to-back -back hits like I Want It That Way and Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely. The boys were back in top form. The chart-topping success of Millennium gave the ambitious quintet the confidence that they could make it without Perlman's guidance. People tell us that, you know, we've helped them by listening to our music through trying times and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's stuff like that that means a lot, a lot to us, you know. They were nominated for five Grammys, sold over 30 million records worldwide, and developed a new contract with Jive worth $60 million. The overwhelming response to their brand of sweet power pop gave the band a new lease on their career. Take it day by day and grow up. Keep trying to improve our writing and our singing and our producing and keep trying to make music as long as we can. The new year brought more good cheer. Ryan and Kevin got engaged to their longtime sweethearts, thus dashing the hopes of teenage girls everywhere. The Backstreet Boys had achieved success and happiness on their own terms. I want it that way. Keeping with the momentum of Millennium, the hard-working pop stars got right back into the studio to begin work on their third album. After Millennium came out and it did so, so incredibly well all over the place, everybody's expecting you to duplicate that over and over and over again. This time out, every member of the group was involved in the songwriting and producing. A first for the boys. We've been, we've been writing nonstop as individuals for the collective the uh, past year, so we're we're coming together with a, with a real wide range of, you know, sounds from like rock to pop to hip hop to contemporary to whatever. The final product was titled Black and Blue. Oh, I, I mean, from the last album to this album, yeah, I think we've definitely grown a lot, you know, personally um, as well as musically. And uh, we feel like our sound is maturing. We want to keep evolving, you know, with our fans. We want to keep growing with our fans. The talented singers had been working together for seven years and they wanted some recognition that they were not just a flash in the pan. The blatant truth is the fact that it's not about how many records we sell, it's not about quantity, it's about quality of the actual music. But materialistically, it would be nice to break new records and to start a whole new trend again. It would be nice. While it didn't match the phenomenal success of Millennium, 2000's Black and Blue sold millions of copies worldwide and achieved platinum status in more than 30 countries. By 2001, the boys kicked off the first leg of the Black and Blue World Tour. selling out in minutes, and the Backstreet Boys looked invincible. But some shocking news was about to shatter the illusion of perfection. The second leg of the tour was postponed because AJ was entering rehab for alcohol abuse, drug addiction, and depression. We're not trying to be role models. I mean, we're just five guys doing something that we love. And <laughs> hopefully, if we make a mistake, nobody will look at us as, as it's something bad. I mean, not perfect. As a group that has a young fan base, we do feel uh, a little bit of pressure to be role models. For the first time in their careers, Backstreet Boys' squeaky clean image was marred. I can personally say that the Backstreet Boys are sorry for what you've been hearing. The band was in a state of total turmoil. They canceled their overseas tour in an effort to regroup. We, we really established a, a very good friendship with, with each other, and um, I think that that's going to keep us together. October 2001 saw the release of a Greatest Hits album, but by the year's end, it was clear that the boys were headed for an extended break. But maybe after this album, we go five different ways, and then we all get on the phone and decide, let's do another album. <laughs> I think we all individually have goals, I think, as, as individuals, and there's things that we would like to do. 
During their time apart, each member focused on themselves. Brian started a family. He's got a real two-year-old boy named Bailey. And Kevin had a chance to do Broadway, both in New York Chicago. and in the uh, West End. Nick did a solo tour, did some acting. Howie did some, in, some real estate investments, as well as a Spanish-English solo record that he's been working on. And AJ continued his recovery, surrounded by friends and family. It's only you can save me. With their hiatus nearing the one-year mark, Fans were beginning to question whether the Backstreet Boys would ever return. When we come back, watch as they make a surprising appearance together for the first time in almost two years and show the world that their bond is the key to their enormous success. When Born to Be continues.